Hi, I'm Jason Hudson from Tenzig Technology, and today we're going to be exploring the package manager for Windows-based thin clients. We are going to look at core elements of the package manager. I will show you how to create, edit, and deploy them to our client endpoints, and also how to export them so we can import them again at a later date. We will look at the build and deployment process from beginning to end, so covering what happens to the package prior to deployment and then eventually where everything ends up on the endpoint. We will also discuss the options used when building the package and how we customise the way it's run on the endpoint, including any post-deployment actions we take. During the initial installation of your Tenzig Manager, you will have set up the image store. This is where any images created by the package manager will be held. Please note that this storage area will grow over time as you create more and more Windows client packages. The image store can be configured through the Tenzig Manager's Cloud Manager settings as shown here. For this demo, I have created a simple package that will install a text file on the endpoint and then bring up the Windows Calculator app on screen. We will be able to see where the text file is deployed to, which is dictated by my custom app as this controls what happens inside the installer. Remember that the package manager only distributes and executes the installer, so you will have to control any installer specifics yourself. To create our first package for deployment, we need to go to the Manage Windows Update Packages icon with the small timer set against it. This opens a dialog box that then enables us to create our first package for deployment. If I click New Update Settings in the toolbar and click Next, I can add a new package. We'll call it Update 1. In the Update file box, we need to specify the location of our installer package that we are going to deploy. In this example, the package I'm going to deploy is called runcalcdemo.exe and sits in the deployment folder on C. Once I have selected the package, I have the option to specify command line parameters. If I want to run the installer runcalcdemo.exe in silent mode, then I would simply type in forward slash silent, which would run the installer on the endpoint without any prompts. If you tick the copy and execute from local temp folder, this will deploy your package to the Windows temp folder under a unique subfolder for later use if required. This is useful if you need to rerun the installer at a later date but you must be aware that these temporary subfolders are not deleted and could ultimately steal space from your local storage. For our example, we won't store it locally as we don't want to leave the contents of the package behind. Setting the wait for process to complete option will wait until the process being executed has completed at the endpoint. This only means that the deployment was successful in delivery and that it started and ended its execution cycle. It does not guarantee the overall outcome of the execution at the endpoint. If you set the reboot client option to on, then as it suggests, the client will reboot the endpoint once the installer has completed. You need to test installers when dealing with reboots, as it may not always happen at the desired time and is sometimes better to ask your users if they want to reboot now or later on, just to be on the safe side. Click Next to move on to the Update Execution settings. Update Execution Level allows you to run the installer in several ways. As Local System Account, which means that you don't have to be logged on, as logged on user and as a specific user if you need specific privileges. Note that if you want your installer to interact with the desktop in any way then you have to specify that it runs as logged on user. For our demonstration we're going to run the installer as the logged on user because we want to see the calc application launch on the desktop. Please be aware that the right protection options do not apply to Windows 10 as it uses UWF, 
so I only used them for Windows platforms earlier than this. If you do have an earlier version of the Windows client, then this gives you the ability to disable the EWF so you can write new content that will be saved to local storage. Click Next and Finish to save your first new installer package. You should now be able to see your package in the list. If you wish to edit your package, then simply return to the Package Manager, select your package and click the pen icon on the toolbar to open the settings for it. Click OK once you're happy with any changes. If you're curious to see where your new package is located, just browse to the image store and you will see a folder named Win Updates and your package should reside in a subfolder under there with the same name. In our case, this was named Update 1. Now we are ready to deploy to the endpoint, so we simply right click the client in the Tenzig Manager select Windows Client Administration, Updates, and then Execute Update. You will see the updates that you have created in here, so simply pick the one you want to deploy and click OK. You'll be asked if you're sure you want to deploy, so click OK. If you look at the Thin Client Jobs window below the Thin Client in the Manager, you'll see the status of the deployment. It looks like ours has been successful, so let's take a look and see what happened. If we VNC onto the client from the manager, we notice that the installer is on the desktop, asking for us to continue with the installation. So we click install, and this completes as we expected. Remember, in the beginning we said our package would deploy a text file to a folder named c colon backslash tenzig files. Well, if we look in there, we can see that it's been deployed and also the Windows calc.exe has been launched as part of the process. It's important to mention here that deploying your custom packages can also be achieved by using the built-in task scheduler that comes as standard with the Tenzig Manager. This gives you the power to deploy your own packages or execute some of the predefined system functions already available and do so for a selection of individual devices or even at group level. I'll be exploring the capabilities and features of the Tenzig Manager Task Scheduler at a later date, so be sure to keep a lookout for that. Before we wrap up today's demonstration, it's important to point out another useful part of the Package Manager, and this is the ability to export and import any packages. This is a straightforward process of going into the package manager, picking your package and then clicking the green down arrow export icon on the toolbar. This will give you the option to save the archive into a compressed single file that can be imported at a later date. In the same way that it was exported, it can also be imported back into the manager using the import process also shown on the toolbar. This concludes today's demonstration of the Package Manager for Windows clients. I hope you enjoyed the session and remember if you have any questions regarding this or related topics then please contact your Tenzig team or visit the website at www.tenzig.com.